The Apple Vision Pro made its way into our lab on release day and we tore it down to bare bones, but that doesn't mean we're done. Today we're taking a look at the hardware that Apple thinks is worth $3,500. If you missed our Vision Pro disassembly video, you can find a link to it in the description. Go check it out and come right back here for the nitty gritty on the hardware. If you had any doubt about how complex the Vision Pro is, this X-ray from Creative Electron should put that doubt to rest. Just look at the sheer density of components involved in this thing, truly amazing. We've also got Evident Scientific back to help us with the details too small for our puny human eyes to see. Let's talk display panels, because outside of software, this is the big new thing that the Vision Pro is really bringing to the table. The specific type of panels used here are called micro OLED panels, but they go by another name, OLED on silicon. TSMC provided the silicon substrate on which Sony grew the micro OLED structure on. Apple hasn't released the exact specs for these panels, but despite the secrecy, our team managed to figure out some of the secret sauce that went into its design. Let's start with Apple's claim that there are 23 million pixels across two of these displays. You might have heard it explained as each panel having more pixels than a 4K TV. That's some clever marketing. They managed to use the words 4K without claiming that the panels can deliver 4K resolution. This is going exactly where you think it's going. Arthur, could you kindly break this down for us? What? Oh. Um, yes, we measured the lit sense area to be about 27.5 millimeters by 24 millimeters. With Evidence Fancy Microscope, we were able to measure each pixel to be about 7.5 microns. Divide the dimensions by that, and we find the lit area to be about 3,660 pixels by 3,200 pixels, equating to 12.1 million lit pixels, give or take a few. These values don't fulfill the 4K definition by commercial standards, but neither do 4K TVs. In short, each of these panels have more pixels than a 4K TV, but they aren't technically 4K. Now, we can calculate the display panel's pixel per inch, or PPI. If we do some math, convert some units, we calculate the Vision Pro panels are about 3,380 PPI. You can fit 50 of these pixels in a single iPhone pixel. 170 of these pixels would fit in a 12.9 inch iPad Pro pixel. And 2,500 of these pixels would fit in a single 65 inch 4K TV pixel. If the Vision Pro display is so dense, why does it look grainier than other devices? Well, it all depends on how close the screen is to your eyes. The further you are from the screen, the more concentrated the pixels are in an area, the higher the PPI. So there you have it, not 4K. But honestly, that doesn't mean much. Any VR nerd will tell you that when it comes to VR headsets, what counts is pixels per degree, or PPD. PPD is the number of observable pixels per degree of vision. Now the math is super involved, but we can get some ballpark figures. We've calculated that the Apple Vision Pro has an average PPD of somewhere around 34 pixels based on a field of view of 100 degrees, which appears to be accurate when measured against the Quest 3 in a very rudimentary test. When compared to the Quest 3, the Apple Vision Pro's field of view is slightly narrower, but the image quality is markedly higher. That doesn't translate to pass-through, but that has less to do with the panels and more to do with the front-facing cameras, the processor's ability to calculate effectively and quickly, and the lens stack, which creates distortions of its own. The technical reasons for this are outside the scope of this video and quite frankly, beyond my ability to explain. Check out Carl Gutag's blog for an excellent explainer on why pass-through is so hard. Now onto the battery pack, which is hiding its own secrets. Here's Carson, who's gonna give you the details. This hefty $200 battery bank is pretty simple, but it's pretty over-engineered too. Looking kind of like a bulked up first-gen iPhone, the case is milled out of a single chunk of aluminum, in classic Apple fashion, of course, and the lid snaps into place with firm perimeter clips, leaving us no real seam for us to pry at. There's also adhesive, so we had to heat it too. We needed a hammer and a chisel to open it up, and recyclers probably will too. As for the battery within the battery, Apple's using three iPhone-sized battery packs stacked on top of each other. Here's an iPhone 15 Plus battery for comparison. It's really close. It's a little smaller in area, but a tad thicker. We think the extra thickness gives the iPhone the edge with more watt hours though. The cells in the Vision Pro battery pack are listed at 15.36 watt hours a piece, suggesting 46.08 watt hours total, if my math's correct. On the pack's aluminum enclosure though, it doesn't say that, it says 35.9. At first glance, this looks like Apple's undershooting the watt hour rating by over 20%. There's a chance they're purposely undercharging the cells in this pack. The same reason they just released an 80% charge limit for the 15 Pro. 
Apple is clearly obsessed over the user experience with this battery bank, packing in temperature sensors and accelerometer that shows the little LED right when you hold it up. The pack is also outputting more voltage than a normal USB-C pack to keep up with the Vision Pro's high processing demands, which is why they use the bespoke big lightning cable, so you don't accidentally plug other devices in and fry them. But fret not, we designed our own battery pack to get around all these restrictions, presenting the iFixit Power Pack, designed and modeled by our own amazing Jason Ritter. With a 90 watt hour capacity, this battery pack can last twice as long as the battery pack that came with the Vision Pro. Now this is just the prototype, but if we do finalize the design, we're going to upload it to our printables.com profile, and you'll find a link to our profile in the description below. Moving on to the logic board, we can quickly identify the M2 system on chip and the all new R1 coprocessor. The M2 does what it does best, it's the main processor, memory and GPU all smushed into one. The R1's job on the other hand is to process all the data coming in from the external and internal sensors. That's the outward facing cameras, true depth sensors, LiDAR sensors, IR illuminators and IR cameras. It's a lot of data and despite having a dedicated processor to handle that information, you'll still notice some lag when moving around in pass-through mode. There are so many more hardware stories to tell here, but these were the ones we found most exciting to talk about. There's no doubting that Apple spent years and millions of dollars developing the design we see here, and it really is a marvel. But let's talk repairability, starting with what we liked. While the device is difficult to get into, mainly thanks to Apple's glue and glass school of engineering, I was astonished to find what appears to be a complete lack of parts pairing. The earpiece speakers and straps are modular and don't appear to be paired. We did run into some issues when we're swapping screens between one unit and another, but my gut feeling is that that has more to do with calibration than parts pairing. The headband and light seal are also highly modular, not something to be taken for granted. Looking at you, Valve Index, with that non-removable back cushion. As for the bad, we have an unrepairable front glass and OLED panel. The battery pack is also physically locked, making it impossible to open without causing damage. It seems unlikely that Apple will provide parts or service manuals for this device outside of the battery pack and the light blockers. With that in mind, we're giving the device a provisional score of 4 out of 10. Didn't get enough Vision Pro teardown goodness? Check out our original teardown video and blog posts for more Vision Pro hardware analysis, x-rays, and some interesting CT scans.